Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and wherever you are on the internet, here we are. I'm Tom Golden, and this is Paul Elam over here. How do? Hello, Paul. It's good to see you. And Paul, of course, has been the uh, a creator of a, a voice for men and an ear for men. And I have been, I've been the creator of Men Are Good, and both of us have been talking about Title IX. What do you think of Title IX, Paul? Well, I think it's a great opportunity, but we'll get into that in a moment. But just to fill people in on the basics, Title IX was created allegedly, supposedly, purportedly <laughs> to address imbalances in sports funding, really, that all the male athletic programs back in, in the 70s, uh, 60s, 70s, and, and before that, got most of college athletic funding and the, and the poor girls didn't get anything. So they developed Title IX to cre correct that imbalance. And of course, feminists have been abusing it ever since. Yes. Uh, every time they get a whiff that a man got funded for anything on a college campus, they've used it to disrupt that, to destroy it. And it's ultimately become a weapon in the hands of feminists to destroy anything male oriented. Did I get that right, Tom? I think that seems like it's pretty right, Paul. I, I kind of like that. And so, you know, we now see that Title IX, because it's been so, so distorted in ways by the feminists, that there's an opportunity for us to come in and uh, push the agenda for men and boys. Um, and that's what this is gonna be about. We're gonna do hopefully a series on Title IX and uh, what you're going to see is Paul and I learning about how to do a complaint, how to file a Title IX complaint. And uh, we're going to struggle with it and, and learn how to do it and probably file a complaint or two. And in the process, uh, you're going to learn as we go along how to do things. And after we get one successfully done, I think, Paul, then we're going to switch gears and start teaching people how to do this. That's uh, the idea, Yeah, uh, is to do a Title IX complaint against women's women-only programs at a university or college near you. Uh, we have not selected one yet, but we're going to work on that complaint. We've uh, been ta talking with Chris Pekaz, uh, who's been doing these Title IX complaints and working very diligently on them. He's instructed us a lot about what to do. So we're going to take that and run with it, and then we're going to show you how to do it. And yes. I just want to make clear from the beginning, the purpose of this, I just, and I need to say this from the standpoint of the, uh, the fringe MGTOW crowd out there that thinks that anytime you try to make the world a little bit better place that you're trying to get men back on the plantation, um, set that conspiracy theory aside for just a moment. Uh, this is intended to inflict pain on feminist ideologues on college campuses who are already abusing Title IX to harm men. Yes. It is not that we think that we're going to create a, a new and better way. It's not that we think that we're going to overcome gynocentrism or fix the system or anything like that. My personal involvement in doing these complaints henceforth is going to be for the sole purpose of inflicting pain on college campus feminists who have been harming men and boys for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, and that's the only reason I have. And I'm hoping that my audience, anyway, will get some great entertainment value uh, out of, <laughs> of watching that pain inflicted. Yes. Yeah, I, I am with you on that. You know, what I'd like to see is giving it back to a man. They've been pummeling us for years and years. It's time we pummeled them a little bit. Yes, it is. So that's kind of they, are, they are in a position because one of the things that we know is they cannot, they cannot, these are federally lodged complaints. They can't just disregard them. Right, right. They have to handle them. Yes. And boy, are we ever going to fucking make them. <laughs> and I hope you are too, but we'll, we'll learn first and then we'll try and teach everybody else how to do it. Because man, it'd be good to have people all over the country forming these complaints, you know? Absolutely. If if a hundred people got together and formed these complaints, I'm telling you, it would wreak havoc. Yes. On yes. campus feminists, it would it would disrupt them. Yes. In a very very powerful way. And I think there's all sorts of creative ways we can do this too. So we'll see. But the first one today, we're going to have a three way conversation with Paul, myself, and Chris Pekgaz, and it's just going to be basically an introduction to Title IX. What is it? 
what's happening with it, what does it mean, what's he done a little bit with it, and um, then we'll go from there. Probably the next one, I think, Paul, is going to be about how do you research what to complain about. Right. We'll get there when we get there. And we'll get there as we're going. This is going to be a learning process for Tom and I both. Yes. I mean, we, we've yes. just been dipping our toes in the water. We both have a lot to learn. And yes. we're going to share that with you as you go along. And for those of you who are so inclined to make uh, rock the boat a little bit yourself, we hopefully will provide you a path with how to do that uh, and cutting out any of the mistakes that commonly come from ignorance of the process. Yes, indeed. And with that, with that said, let's go to Chris and our conversation and uh, we'll go. We'll see you. Hey, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on the internet. This is uh, Tom Golden and I have two good men with me today. One is Paul Elam, who you know from A Voice for Men and An Ear for Men, and the founder of those fine organizations. Well, Paul, welcome. Thanks, Tom. How you doing, bud? I'm feeling good. I'm really happy about what we're going to talk about today. And with us today is Chris. And Chris, how do you say your last name? Uh, Pekos. Pekos. Yes. This is Chris Pekos. He is an expert in Title IX sorts of things. And Paul and I have been talking about Title IX for a long time, eh, Paul? Oh, yeah. It's, how- it's gone back, uh, you know, since it first came on board, uh, sort of uh, disrupting and even in some cases destroying men's athletic programs Yes, uh, in universities across. Over 700 of them so far, I think. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. So, but yeah. we're going to be talking, I understand it a little bit differently about Title IX today. A little yeah. different, I would say, because Chris has basically taken Title IX and used it as a means to look at the rights of men rather than the rights of women. So, uh, yeah. Maybe, Chris, you can start us off by just saying what you think Title IX is. I mean, what is this stuff we're talking about? Um, Title IX is a law that was passed by the Congress back in 1973. I need to check. I'm not entirely sure. So, okay. um, 73 is good. It originally, it was just like a two-sentence amendment to the Civil Rights Act, and it basically huh. just says that no person in the United States will be denied and educational benefits on the basis of sex. Hmm. Uh, and I, of course, like, um, it was, the language was copy pasted from Title VI, which is the, you know, like there's like a similar civil rights law, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race. Um, and uh, the thing is like over the years, and especially with like kind of like different administrations, which have like uh, certain political agendas managed to, distort Title IX into a massive regulatory machine, so to speak, with like a huge army of bureaucrats, especially in colleges. And they distorted, like, um, they distorted the definition to such a degree that right now, when you look at colleges, like the, the picture that you see is just horrifying. So right now we have a system in colleges. I, I think that's the first fact that needs to be really emphasized to our audience is that 99% of all students and faculty members who are expelled in colleges under Title IX are men. Mm. So feminists basically managed to create a system in which women are categorically immune to punishment no matter what they do. And this includes, um, you know, like violent behavior or like false accusations, things like that. You know, behavior that is punished in a civilized society is no longer being punished because of Title IX, because they managed to create this outrage machine, which I'm going to be talking more about later. Uh, so that that's, I think like to me, that's really the first fundamental flaw. We really have uh, a, an enforcement mechanism in this country where like uh, the rules have been stacked against men in the most outrageous manner possible, and in which women have become practically immune to punishment, no matter what they do. And, you know, like this system has immense consequences now. It has leaked to the Congress. So, you know, what they designed in the university system is now they're trying to do the same thing in the Congress with kind of like the Kavanaugh um, recall or like withdrawal requests. So we can kind of like discuss that later as well. But that's not the only harm that was caused by Title IX. Uh, as Paul kind of like mentioned, it's, it has also been used to destroy men's athletics. And the reason we have that is because um, 
they eventually managed to some radical feminist lawyers managed to persuade like some federal judges that we need to have a quota system. So let's say if a school has 60% female enrollment, then schools are obliged to offer 60% of their athletic resources to women. Now, there are two major problems with that one. Men are like more interested in sports than women. We all know this. But second, uh, men are also a minority in colleges. Like they're running away from colleges because I think they instinctively understand, you know, how unfair like colleges are to men. Like Dangerous. You know, of course, like dangerous as well, definitely. Yes. And um, they're boycotting colleges by like refusing enrollments. And that means that like the fewer men there are, schools actually have to devote even more resources to women. So like with some colleges now you have like 60% female enrollment, which is I think close to the national average. And school administrators have to devote 60% of their athletic resources to female athletes, which makes no sense whatsoever. And because of this, they had to create, like, synthetic artificial scholarships. Um, I was in the U.S.'s rowing team for a year, and, like, what I saw is that there are a lot of female students who do nothing. They don't even attend kind of, like, um, you know, like, workout practices and, or anything like that. And they still get paid, like, massive scholarships. There is like the men's crew, which has been demoted to uh, a club sport, uh, receives no funding whatsoever. We actually have to pay to participate in men's crew. We have to pay like a thousand dollars per year. Whereas like with, with like women's crew, they, they do absolutely nothing and they get paid massive scholarships uh, because of that. Where is this now? Uh, the University of Southern California. Huh. So, and you know, like this is, this is not just USC, obviously the same case has been replicated across the country. Crew, like rowing is especially popular because I think like female athletes can just fake attendance. Uh, like there are like female crew teams in states which have no access to water. Like they're still creating this like artificial athletic departments in order to comply with Title IX. Um, and the thing is like football, because football is so popular and because it, you know, like, it's so expensive, you know, like, it drains their resources. All other, like, men's sports are negatively affected. Right. So, usually, the, the kind of, like, um, I think definitely, like, rowing, uh, wrestling, track. Right. right. Like many of those, like, have basically been defunded because of Title IX. Yes. And so, what most people don't know is that uh, men's sports, like the club sports in colleges, are the way men get together and, and develop friendships. You of know, course, yes. Women tend to develop friendships all over the place, at lunch and blah, blah, and blah, blah. But men specifically, sports is a way they get together and get to know each other, you know? Absolutely, and that's it's intentional. Eerily, eerily for me, this resembles a lot of the efforts going on around STEM courses these days, yeah. where this is an area primarily of men's interest and always yeah. has been. And they have put vast resources, efforts, money, everything else into recruiting women into STEM when they are, generally speaking, not interested in those courses. Yeah, that's true. Yes. They are trying to implement a similar quota system in STEM as well. Um, so I guess like the first issue with like Title IX is, first of all, they created a system in which like women are categorically immune to punishment when it comes to sexual behavior. So that's kind of like the first, um, and you know, like it's an injustice of such magnitude. Like, I mean, just try to imagine what would happen if you had a system in which, let's say, like white people or black people or men were categorically immune to punishment no matter what they did. Like, there will be an immense outrage. Like, there's no way the international community would accept something like that. But right now, we have a system in this country where women are immune to punishment no matter what they do, no matter how outrageous their behavior is. Yes. And this is, this is being maintained by feminists. I think there's been a little bit of pushback recently. There have been a few high-profile cases of women finally getting punished. Uh, there was one professor at New York University, Avital Ronell, who got like a one-year suspension. She's still getting paid, so it's like a slap on the wrist. Or yeah, she's a feminist. She is a, one of the feminist darlings in academe, too, yes. uh, which, yeah. it, it, which really upset the sisterhood that she got any kind of consequence at all. Yes, but it's still an improvement. And it's kind of interesting that the same feminists who are, you know, basically uh, 
who go on witch hunts against like accused men are also very aggressively involved in defending accused women. I've seen this because I prosecuted a woman for sexual assault and like I've seen this happen. Uh, and it's both, I think it's mostly liberal women, but some conservative women are also on board with this. Huh. Uh, yeah, like the, the, the attorney who defended my, uh, basically like the woman with whom like I had an adversarial uh, proceeding was Harmi Dillon. So she's like a conservative feminist type. She's influential, like Fox News and like to some degree with the Republican Party. Like there are other people in Fox News, like Tucker, who are like sympathetic to men's issues. But, you know, then there are other people with, like Harmi who are actually very hostile to men's rights. Yes. Um, but anyway, so that, that's the second, like the second field is athletic scholarships. And again, there's also like a massive injustice with that as well. They, they're creating the synthetic scholarships, yes. et cetera. Now, but the complaints that I'm filing, and I've technically, at least for now, managed to create like a new field, so to speak, because most Title IX controversies are about either sexual harassment or athletics. Uh, I've try to create like a new field altogether. And like what I'm targeting is basically any female on the program in colleges and there or like training scholarships and all of them are technically violate Title IX. The language of Title IX is very strict when it comes to let's say female on scholarships or like sex restrictive uh, trainings, counseling, scholarships or like uh, programs, they all violate Title IX technically, but again, feminists have distorted the law to such a degree that um, whenever it's benefiting women, like it doesn't violate Title IX, but whenever it benefits men even slightly, then they aggressively attack those. Um, and unfortunately, it's very disturbing, but like UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, so the National Coalition for Men filed a complaint against them. And now, like, some attorneys from the Department of Education are trying to dismiss that. They're saying you should identify male students who specifically apply to this program. So just, I mean, just look at distributity. Like, so there are programs <laughs> that are advertising themselves. It's like women only, right? It's like women's X club, like faculty forum for women. And they're telling us that we need to find men who specifically apply to these programs and who specifically get rejections before we, they can prosecute these programs. Huh. It's ridiculous. And even if we define those, then they're going to try to cast that as a he said, she said situation in order to yeah. make these allegations. Or like they will just say, okay, this particular man wanted to get involved and now we're giving him a waiver, but the programs will still continue. So they are being, unfortunately, um, they're not being honest. Like, it's yes. not a great procedure. And, and but again, an uphill battle. Yes. Uh, and you know, like press coverage is limited. Uh, they tend to be like, they tend to control like a significant portion of the press. I think there has been some improvement recently uh, over the last few years because the system has gotten to such an like outrageous levels of absurdity that I think some people are beginning to wake up despite yes. all the you know, like despite all the control that they have over the mainstream press and everything, but it's hard to conceal a system, you know, in which women are categorically immune to punishment or like such outrageous injustices continue. Yes. So I think like there's some resistance, but there's, you know, like they're also trying to stifle that resistance as well. And that's where you come in, Chris, because you're out there creating resistance and you also now seem to be um, interested in teaching other people exactly how to do this. Is that right? Yes, I'm doing my best. Uh, it's not easy, um, you know, because there are some professional attorneys who take on such cases, like especially with accused men. But those professional attorneys, like they love money, you know, they want to get paid. And like with these complaints, there, there, there are like no damages involved. So, uh, you, like, at least with the Department of Education, you cannot sue a college for money. So, like, I'm basically asking for the programs to be converted into either gender-neutral programs or we are asking colleges to create male-only programs to offset the imbalance, so to speak. So we are not asking for money. And because we are not asking for money, professional attorneys don't want to get involved. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's putting me in a difficult situation because like, I'm doing all this pro bono work 
like to the best extent that I can. But I'm also getting a lot of bad publicity and like backlash for it. So it's unfortunately like engaging in men's rights advocacy or like civil advocacy for men is basically like reverse philanthropy. But like you do something, you know, out of like good intentions because you want to help people, but you actually get reviled for it. Yes. Yeah. Whereas like with feminist activists, like you have all these diverse bureaucrats who get like paid enormous salaries to perpetrate this like bureaucratic system. And you know, like they are very smart, they are comfortable, like they are the ones who are controlling academia. They are the ones who punish, like expel any man who criticizes them. Um, mm. And they are the ones who get like, you know, uh, praised by, by the press because, you know, like they are creating like, they're helping with like diverse efforts and everything. And, and you know, this is an area that we're both very familiar with. Yes, yeah, we're pushed yeah. along by gynocentrism, which blesses everything they do and curses everything we do to try and stop it. Yeah, I, I agree. But you know, like it's so the fundamental premises are so flawed that women are the majority and their numbers are increasing. And I'm basically just requesting that these affirmative action programs should be should become gender neutral. So I mean. A case, like an argument can be made that we should even have affirmative action for men because they're the minority and like the numbers are shrinking, but that's like so way ahead and it probably will never happen. So, but we cannot even abolish affirmative action for women at this stage, even though they are the absolute majority and their numbers are increasing. Yes. Well, we uh, can file Title IX complaints. Indeed. Yeah, but you know, the Department of Education is like resisting, so they are not really they are not being like very forthcoming about this. And can, um, you, can you tell us, Chris, about what you're doing? So what I do is like I do research. Uh, I'm the one like who compiled all those like I'm the one who compiled all that information and like wrote all the complaints. And whenever like someone reaches out for help to ask for a complaint, I I do my best to help them with their written narrative. Huh. Um, that's what I do. And, uh, oh, you mean people around the country, if they were filing a complaint and needed some help, they could email you and say hello. Yes. And yes. And, uh, a few people have and that ended our conversation with Chris, uh, giving us the basics of where we go from here. Tom and I both are going to be studying up on this and filing our own complaints, which we are going to share with you as they happen, including the results. And we're going to be sharing with you exactly how to go about doing your own. Uh, so what can I say, but, you know, let's do this and let's fuck their shit up. I was going to say FTSU. FTSU, baby. Yeah, man. That's good. So we'll see you for the next one. The next one. That's uh, good. And so are men. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well said, sir. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's see if I can turn this fucking thing off. <laughs> That's become a, a joke on my Patreon site.